It was a stormy afternoon, rain pouring down as if the heavens had forgotten to turn off the faucet. Inside a nondescript box van parked in front of a police station, two men sought refuge from the downpour. One man, impeccably dressed in a sharp suit, went by the name Jai Hyung Du, while the other, Ra Han, was a bit more rugged in appearance. Hyung Du, with a serious tone in his voice, reminded Ra Han about the dangerous mission they were about to embark on. The raindrops drumming against the van's metal exterior seemed to amplify his words. Rahan, however, oozed confidence and tried to assure his companion that he would be just fine. In a playful manner, he requested Hyung Du to write a glowing report about his bravery and skill if things didn't go as planned. With a sense of purpose, Rahan retrieved a mysterious package from the back of the van and made his way towards the police station entrance. Inside the building, fate led him to an elevator encounter with two disgruntled officers who were less than pleased with the state of the package he was delivering. They grumbled about its apparent damage, but Rahan, maintaining his cool facade, nonchalantly replied that it wasn't his concern since he was just a humble deliverer. Oh, how the officers scolded him for his impolite response. It seemed they had a keen eye for etiquette, even in the midst of a rain-soaked day. As the elevator doors opened, Rahan bid the officers farewell and made his exit, leaving them to their ascent to the upper floors, unbeknownst to them. Their destination was the secure witness protection room, where a man named Yong Han, a key figure in a criminal case against a notorious kingpin, was being safeguarded. Rahan's mission, chilling as it may be, was to silence this crucial witness. He stealthily approached the room, determined to complete his deadly task. However, his intentions were swiftly foiled by two vigilant officers guarding the entrance. They intercepted Rahan, demanding an explanation for his presence. But Rahan, ever the enigmatic character, remained silent, seemingly absorbed in the music playing through his earphones. The officers grew suspicious. Their eyes fixated on his hand, which had lingered inside the box. Suddenly, in a lightning-fast move, Rahan drew a gun from the box, catching everyone off guard. It turned out he was not just a mere deliverman, but a professional assassin of unparalleled skill. Chaos ensued as he neutralized all the officers on that floor, leaving them no chance to react. Yong Han, terrified by the unfolding violence, pleaded for his life, promising to retract his testimony and abandon any thoughts of appearing in court. Alas, it was too late. Rahan, a merciless instrument of death, silenced the witness with a lethal gunshot, extinguishing any hope of justice prevailing in the case. With the grim task completed, Rahan reported back to Hyung Du, declaring the mission a success. But little did he know that betrayal lurked in the shadows. As Rahan prepared to make his escape from the police station, an unexpected assailant attacked him, catching him off guard. Lo and behold, it was none other than Hyung Du, his trusted colleague. In a twist of fate, Hyung Du subdued Rahan's body, placing it in the back of the van, and swiftly departed the scene leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. The van navigated through the rain-soaked streets until it arrived at a desolate, dimly lit alleyway. Hyung Du brought the vehicle to a halt, and as if following a carefully orchestrated plan, a couple of men approached, deftly disguising the van with stickers to conceal its true nature. This was their artistry in motion, their expertise evident in every move. Hyung Du, his appearance that of an ordinary office worker, stepped into a seemingly mundane office building, known as the NCM agency, specializing in the metals sector. Inside, the office buzzed with activity as each employee diligently attended to their respective tasks. Hyung Du, with a sense of purpose, made his way to a stock room hidden in the depths of the building. There, he discreetly activated a lever, revealing a secret path leading to a concealed basement. In the dimly lit underground space, he encountered a woman named Mrs. Wang, known for her meticulous attention to detail. Rahan's gun, still harboring traces of its violent purpose, exchanged hands as Hyung Du handed it to her. Mrs. Wang swiftly got to work, wiping away any fingerprints and emptying the magazine, erasing any trace of its past deeds. Suddenly, from the shadows, a man emerged. He was Guan Zhang Ti, the manager of the NCM agency. Though the exterior of the company seemed ordinary, its inner workings were anything but. It had become a clandestine haven for assassins, catering to the highest bidder. Zhang Ti, curious about Hyung Du's tardiness, confronted him, reminding him that even as a seasoned senior with Within the organization, such lapses in punctuality were unacceptable. Hyung Du humbly apologized, knowing he had broken the code of conduct. Their conversation took a darker turn as Zhang Ti inquired about Ra Hun's fate. Hyung Du's response was chillingly matter of fact, announcing that he had put an end to Ra Hun's life. In the world of assassins, loyalty and trust were fleeting commodities, and Hyung Du had become the executor of his comrade's demise, leaving the presence of Zhang Ti behind. Hyung Du sought solace in the company of Ban Jai Hun, his former senior in the agency. Jai Hun, having once molded Hyung Du into the skilled assassin he had become, held a special place in his heart. Hyung Du owed his mentor a debt of gratitude for all he had done. But Jai Hun, a wizened figure, cautioned Hyung Du to tread carefully, for the agency held more power than they could ever hope to challenge. With a touch of melancholy, Jai Hun promised Hyung Du that his cherished car would be bequeathed to him upon his passing knowing well Hyung Du's infatuation with the sleek vehicle. Meanwhile, a diligent detective named Jo Myung Diok had caught wind of the CCTV footage capturing the chaotic events at the police station. 
Armed with his sharpened instincts and honed investigative skills, he delved into the depths of the case, determined to unravel the tangled web of intrigue that surrounded Ra Hun and Hyung Du. In search of answers, Hyung Du ventured to a location where he believed he could find Ra Hun's address. To his surprise, a group of teenagers, including a young woman bearing a striking resemblance to Ra Hun, intercepted his path. Among them was Ra Bo Seul, unmistakably Ra Hun's sister. Curiosity peaked. Hyung Du inquired about their mother's whereabouts, only to be met with an unexpected barrage of aggression. The teenagers foolishly underestimated Hyung Du's prowess. Their futile attempts at combat swiftly subdued. Their scuffle ended as abruptly as it began. With Hyung Du emerging victorious, leaving the young rebels nursing their wounded pride, Ra Bo Seul retreated into her house, re-emerging with her mother, Yu Mai Yeon. Hyung Du, mindful of his purpose, introduced himself as Ra Hun's colleague, seeking solace in delivering a bag brimming with Ra Hun's hard-earned saving. With a touch of bitter sweetness, he informed Yu Mai Yeon that Ra Hun had been called away on a job that required him to venture out of the city. As the story unfolded, Hyung Du found himself drawn into the complex dynamics of the lives around him, invited to dinner at Mai Yeon's house. He witnessed the strained relationship between her and her daughter, Bo Seul. Bo Seul didn't hold back, expressing her disdain for her mother's singing career, labeling it as cheap and her songs as crappy. In a playful twist, she even played one of her mother's songs, intending to highlight its alleged mediocrity. However, Hyung Du, with a knowing smile, recognized the tune from his own childhood days. Those very songs had accompanied him during his struggles on the streets. Ah, the power of music to connect unexpected dots. In the midst of this domestic drama, Hyung Du received an unexpected summons from the agency's chairman, John. Recognizing Hyung Du's seniority, Jian sought his assistance in a delicate matter concerning his own son's employment. Expectations were high for Hyung Du, as he was tasked with the secret mission of monitoring one of their employees, Jin Ki Guk. Jian revealed that Ki Guk had tragically lost his young son in an accident, and ever since, he had been adrift, lost in his own thoughts. Hyung Du's memory flickered as he recalled Ki Guk sharing a photo of his beloved child in the past. Taking up the mantle, Hyung Du began tailing Ki Guk, but the seasoned assassin sensed his presence. Confronting Hyung Du, Ki Guk brandished a threat, showing he still had his killer instincts intact. Hyung Du, always quick on his feet, suggested Ki Guk may be taking things a step too far, but the grief stricken man remained resolute. He expressed his desire to resign from the agency, no longer willing to be a part of its dark machinations. Hyung Du dutifully reported the encounter to Zhang Ti, only to face another round of scolding. The weight of negligence pressed upon him, but little did he know that Ra Hun, thought to be dead, had miraculously survived and was recovering in a hospital. Intrigue deepened as the agency's true nature was unveiled. It trained skilled assassins in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the art of assembling weapons, and the ability to carry out missions without leaving a trace. This time, their target was a notorious figure known as Target M, a broker who had absconded with a hefty sum of investment money. The agency swiftly sealed off access to the first floor and sabotaged the CCTV system, leaving no trace of their actions. The mission played out flawlessly, with Target M meeting his demise in a clean and efficient manner. Amidst the chaos, Ra Hun was reunited with his mother, and Hyung Du found himself invited to a family dinner, grateful for Hyung Du's intervention. Mai Yeon expressed her heartfelt appreciation. It was during this intimate gathering that Mai Yeon shared her life story, the struggles she had endured since losing her husband when she was just 18. Hyung Du couldn't help but admire her resilience in raising two children single-handedly, offering his sincere praise for her unwavering strength. In a twist of fate, Hyung Du received a message revealing that Ki Guk's resignation had been approved by the agents. A chilling realization struck him. The agency had decided to eliminate Ki Guk once and for all. Concerned, he reached out to Zhang Ti, seeking confirmation, only to be met with another round of scolding. The agency's callous disregard for Ki Guk's life was evident. However, Ki Guk had caught wind of their intentions and awaited Hyung Du in his apartment, refusing to surrender to his grim fate. A tense confrontation ensued, but Hyung Du managed to gain the upper hand, gun pointed at Ki Guk's head, urging his former senior to flee immediately. Hyung Du provided him with a glimmer of hope in the darkness. As the agency carried on with its business as usual, including a field trip and a promotional event, tension simmered beneath the surface. Zhang Ti, strutting with arrogance, reveled in his position, berating employees who owed their roles solely to their familial connections. Chairman Jian, however, stood as a beacon of pride, publicly congratulating Hyung Du on his managerial promotion, putting him in the spotlight. Meanwhile, Hyung Du's relationship with Mai Yeon blossomed, and they found themselves at a quaint cafe owned by one of her friends, and a surprising turn of events. Her friend mentioned the cafe was up for sale, tempting Mai Yeon with an opportunity to become its owner. However, she brushed it off, acknowledging her financial limitations. Her friend couldn't help but express her surprise at seeing Mai Yeon in a blossoming romance, unaware of the serendipitous connection between Hyung Du and Mai Yeon's music. Their bond seemed to be deepening, taking a more serious turn. Detective Myung Diok, ever persistent, chanced upon the neighborhood where Ra Hun resided. Inquiring about Ra Hun's whereabouts, he showed a sketch to a group of teenagers, hoping for some leads. However, fate intervened once again as Hyung Du and Mai Yeon crossed paths with the detective. 
Myung Diok, with a tinge of recognition, requested to see Hyung Du's identification and driver's license. Alas, he found nothing amiss, and after receiving Hyung Du's business card, he reluctantly let them go. Little did he know the secrets they harbored. Meanwhile, Ki Guk, despite the agency's best efforts, remained alive. He was often seen visiting his son's grave, a somber reminder of his loss. The agency, growing increasingly impatient, captured Ki Guk and confined him to the basement. As Hyung Du entered the chamber, he was met with piercing eyes and a silence that spoke volumes. The weight of unfinished business hung heavy in the air. Hyung Du faced an inquiry about his unfinished job, but he remained silent, unable to offer an explanation. Ki Guk, however, expressed his frustration, accusing everyone of being hypocrites who pretended to live normal lives while being involved in killing for money. He specifically criticized Zhang Ti for his lack of field experience. Ki Guk's words resonated with Hyung Du, who felt powerless to change the situation. Later, Myung Diok and his colleagues visited the NC agency hoping to uncover its true nature, but to their disappointment, it appeared to be an ordinary office. Chairman Zhan and Zhang Ti were displeased with Hyung Du's performance as he failed to complete his assignment, especially after CCTV footage revealed two police officers visiting the office. Zhang Ti was instructed to handle the situation with the officers, and Hyung Du was reprimanded for giving them his business card, fearing Zhang Ti's authority. Hyung Du endured the beating without fighting back. He questioned why he, a skilled and dangerous assassin, was subjected to such mistreatment, recalling Ki Guk's words about the moral ambiguity of their action. Hyung Du awaited Ma Yeon after work and took the opportunity to confess his feelings to her. The following day, Ma Yeon presented Hyung Du with a self-made briefcase, and he offered his savings to help her buy her friend's cafe, expressing a desire to become her investor. However, a problem arose when one of the workers reported that Ra Hun, the target of Hyung Du's mission, was still alive, indicating Hyung Du's failure once again. Chairman John was deeply disappointed. Despite the setback, Hyung Du managed to purchase the cafe for Ma Yeon. As she began to sing, it evoked childhood memories for Hyung Du and filled him with happiness, giving him a newfound purpose to live a content life with Ma Yeon. He contemplated resigning from the agency, but hesitated to submit the letter immediately. On that day, he embarked on another mission, accompanied by two agency employees, sensing something amiss when they took an alternate route. Hyung Du insisted on using the highway, convinced of impending danger. His instincts proved correct when the two employees revealed their intent to kill him. A fight ensued inside the moving car, resulting in Hyung Du overpowering and eliminating one of them. They pulled over, continuing their confrontation outside the vehicle. Hyung Du's exceptional skills enabled him to defeat his opponent, but the woman was fatally struck by oncoming traffic. Realizing the agency was aware of Ra Hun's survival, Hyung Du urgently contacted him, advising him to leave their home immediately. Panicked, Ra Hun called his mother, and they fled with Bo Seul, confused and unaware of the situation. Hyung Du instructed them to remain silent as they sought shelter at Jai Hun's place. However, Jai Hun, upon seeing Hyung So and the others, scolded Hyung Du for involving them. Hyung Du confided in Jai Hun, revealing the hidden money he had earned in his apartment's basement. He implored Jai Hun to take care of Ra Hun and his family while he retrieved the money. Before leaving, Ma Yeon sought an explanation from Hyung Du, who, with no other choice, divulged his true identity as an assassin. Though understanding Ra Hun's intentions, Ma Yeon reproached her son for engaging in unforgivable acts of violence for money. Hyung Du bid farewell to Ra Hun and his family, expressing gratitude to Chairman John for the years spent in his agency. He declared his departure from the organization. Meanwhile, the NCM staff attempted to track Hyung Du's whereabouts, with some waiting in his apartment, skillfully evading contact with the assassins lying in wait. Hyung Du retrieved the money from the basement and returned to Jai Hun's house, only to discover his former colleagues had betrayed him. Ra Hun and his family were held at gunpoint, and Jai Hun revealed his betrayal, driven by his depleted retirement funds. Hyung Du pleaded for Ra Hun's release, but they refused, deeming them too knowledgeable to be set free. Forced into action, Hyung Du fought back in a gunfight, resulting in Jai Hun's demise. Tragically, Ma Yeon was struck by a bullet and lost her life in Hyung Du's arms. The next morning, Ra Hun cleaned the crime scene, while Hyung Du resolved to seek vengeance against the agency responsible for taking his loved ones. The entire NCM staff prepared for Hyung Du's arrival armed and ready, while Zhang Ti distanced himself from the office for his own safety. Hyung Du entered the office, feigning normalcy as he greeted the receptionist, anticipating her attempt to shoot him from behind. He swiftly eliminated her, progressing toward Zhang Ti's office, only to find it empty. As he exited the office, he was met with fierce resistance from the entire agency. A gunfight erupted, with Hyung Du initially holding his ground but eventually becoming overwhelmed by the sheer numbers. Nevertheless, he managed to eliminate everyone, sparing a new recruit, whom he advised to seek a different profession, before departing. Meanwhile, at the detective's office, Myung Diok received news of the shootout at NCM agents and hurried to the scene. In the basement, Hyung Du confronted Chairman Jian, who was accompanied by Mrs. Wang. 
In a desperate attempt to kill him, Mrs. Wang aimed a shotgun at Hyeongdu, but his reflexes allowed him to dodge the shot and eliminate her. Subsequently, Chairman John's bodyguard engaged Hyeongdu in close combat, showcasing impressive skills but ultimately falling victim to Hyeongdu's prowess. Finally, Chairman John emerged, taken aback that the person he trusted most had orchestrated his downfall. Suddenly, an unexpected attacker targeted Hyeongdu, but he swiftly evaded the assault, causing the assailant to fall from an upper floor to his death on the concrete below. Rahan appeared, saving Hyeongdu just as the police surrounded the building. Injured and aware of his impending capture, Hyeongdu sacrificed himself, urging Rahan to flee and start a new life with his sister using the money Hyeongdu had left for them. Zhang Ti intervened, attacking Rahan and Hyeongdu. Despite his wounds, Hyeongdu valiantly fought back, but he was weakened and unable to overcome Zhang Ti. However, through a stroke of fate, Zhang Ti slipped and fell from an upper floor, meeting his demise. As police officers closed in, Hyeongdu descended the stairs to confront them, while Ra Hun managed to escape undetected. Exhausted and battered, Hyeongdu faced the police, knowing his actions would lead to his capture. 